on YouTube, it's James with Shyhammer Fantasy Battle Reports, and it's Adepticon Team Tournament Round 3. It's my last of the Adepticon 2016 series here today. It's the last time we're using version 0.11 rules or version 11 rules. And, um, yeah, I mean, we had a hell of a roller coaster so far. This is the last game. We're playing against Friday Night Dice, uh, led by Rick Fisher and Chris Walker. Um, now, um, I've actually fought Rick Fisher before. I've gone to Friday Night Dice before. Um, so I've, I have I I have a winning streak against Rick. <laughs> um, so uh, I kind of know how his tactics are and how he plays already. So that's a good, new, that's a good thing. Um, the, I do have right now a very decent Adepticon streak. I've only lost one game out of all, let's see, I did three at Brawl, the big Brawl. Um, I did four at the singles so at seven and then I did three more in the team tournament so fo so far well not including the last one so so far out of nine games I've only lost once so that's a great record and I'm just gonna I'm hoping we can keep it up and see how it goes um, now uh, let's go over what we brought on both sides of the table see how um, how this is gonna go maybe just maybe we could pull out like a massacre win and jump up and win best general or something like that we're not far we're on table three guys so um, there was like 16 teams I think which is actually a shit ton of teams for a team tournament I didn't think that many people would show for a team tournament but it was on the Saturday but um, yeah we're gonna go ahead and see if we could potentially jump up maybe steal a, a, a best general award if not um, let's just see what we could get. Maybe, hopefully, hopefully, I could bring home some Adepticon goal. Um, cause I'm on, a, I'm on a, I'm on a winning streak right now from that too. I got a, uh, I got a, a plaque in the gauntlet from the gauntlet. I got Ocon best paint. I got best paint at, um, at Brawlers and at Brawlers Bash. I also got best Orc and Goblin General. So I'm, a, I'm on a winning streak. Plus, we won tag teams in Ocon. So I just want to get something from Adepticon. Not coming home empty-handed. I want to get something I, I, I paid all this goddamn money to go here <laughs> coming home with something god damn it anyways let's go over um really quick what we have bam got chicken head and turkey neck uh turkey neck's not really playing in this game but he's just there for the fluff but chicken head is my my goblin hero on a wolf he's basically my chaff my two up armor chaff that is all i brought him here for today <laughs> Uh, behind him, I got my uh, my brother's Frosties, the Frost Mammoth, um, or the yeah, I think it is the Frost Mammoth. Um, basically, he has been uh, he's been going with the A Rock just to slow down the A Rock's enemies and just more or less be a debuff. Um, here is the A Rock though. The A Rock is my Gargantula Spider, the Mother of Dragons, the two-time tournament MVP. This son of a bitch is just a beastly badass motherfucker that's all she is that she is just the shit and i cannot say that enough without more emphasis on the shit she has been pulling her points every tournament i go to and uh definitely worth uh, her weight in gold there now over here i got uh we got ham and ham is a saber tooth tiger looks like a pig but it's a saber tooth um, over here got the veteran mercenaries got six or seven of them six of them in a con I think it is and uh, the con has a ward and I believe yetis for uh, the mercenaries are armed with uh, poison and bodyguard they also have brace of pistols um, over here we have the tribesmen the tribesmen uh, there's seven of them they have heavy armor and iron fists um, over here I have a unit of 22 Nashers um, and then in the background you can see I have two goblin shamans one's a, a level one little wog and the other one is a level two little wog the one with the level two also has the ring of fire that is goblin Joe with all that um, over here we have the cross borks 14 cross borks and um, over here we have the bushwhackers they're 24 goblins mother's gift banner last time you will see this unit with that banner with the poison shooting and the double taps and the 40 tomahawks in the face and everybody complaining like what the fuck how many shots do you get that's broken <laughs> <laughs> because it was a tad bit broken. I understand, but god damn it, they're just goblins. If you can't take some strength three shots from goblins, man up. God damn it. In the background, you can see holding the little metal uh, Katana fan. That is Longshot. He is a goblin, uh, force goblin with 
poison and the skull splitter shotgun um and as you can see this is just kind of overview of everybody um magic spells i got fireball like i said i got uh, two evil eyes i got a signature and uh on both uh so they get 2d6 or 3d6 strength three hits and i got armor piercing with it which is sneaky stabbing um or sneaky slicing i think it is i don't know what the hell it's called it's called something like that as for my opponent rick rick and chris friday night dice they have a rock arak on the left over there um right next to that um you could kind of make it out right oh here we go it's a better picture um we ha he has a in the front that's a razor tusk on the front left on the front right that's a razor tusk chariot and then on the right that's cut off that is a raiding chariot uh behind them actually i think i think it might be another razor tusk chariot it is another razor tusk chariot behind them he has a unit of uh tribesmen the tribesmen just have um i think they're iron fists um and then he has a giant right there that is a beast giant um over here better picture of the chariots um over here he has a giant horde of uh wild horns with a general in that horde uh i am not sure what the general has um spoiler alert the general really never got in combat so i don't know what he was using and to top it off adepticon was two weeks ago man i don't remember this shit anymore man I have like five more games I have to post up, man. I'm like, holy crap, I gotta hurry this shit up. Because I'm forgetting stuff. But the general had something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but he does have a giant block of them. They're, they're only like seven wide, though. It looks confusing because it looks like it could be ten wide, so like 40 of them. No, it's seven by four. So it's only like 28 or 30 of those guys. Um, that's not as, as it, uh, scary as thinking of a block of 40. But it, it kind of messes with your mind. It really does. It messed with my mind. Thinking like, oh shit, he has a horde of wild horde herd over there. Uh, horns. Um, he does have another raiding chariot next to them. And then over here he has another unit of tribesmen and another raiding chariot. Um, his general does have this item. I do remember this. His general does have an item that's giving an aura of uh, every beast in a certain range from the general can vanguard up. So he's going to vanguard up, and he's going to vanguard up with all this. Brrrr, the chariots, the razor tusk, and the giant. On the far right, you can't see him in this picture. He does have another unit of yetis, and he has another razor tusk going behind the buildings. Now, the objectives in this, this game right here is to collect the terrain. So whoever has more units in terrain or nearby terrain will win the extra objective points. All right? So, um... I believe it's a uh, standard battle line. We're going to go to turn one. He, We win the first turn. Um, we did drop our army off, and then he goes, oh, you can kind of see the Yetis there in that picture and the t Razor Tusk. Anyways, um, uh, we did win the first roll off, so um, we're going to go ahead and go first. And first things first, I don't Vanguard with Chicken Head because he, he Vanguard with his whole army. If, he, if I would have won the Vanguard, I would have vanguarded chicken head up and just fucked up his whole vanguard but unfortunately it was the other way around so i go ahead and i charge with chicken head now chicken head is on a wolf that guy is about 12 inches away okay i need to on swift stride charge in three inches three fucking inches all right i rolled triple ones are you fucking kidding me <laughs> That was the first charge of the game. Holy shit. God damn it. Chicken head, you, you son of a bitch. You're not chicken head, man. I don't know who you are. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. So I go ahead and I move up everybody else like this. Um, now, um, I did, for some reason, for some godforsaken reason, uh, our mercenaries are all the way on the far right side of the corner. They're, the, again, the most expensive unit we have, so you can't really see them. They're, if they get in trouble, we're, we're in trouble. We're going to lose the gate if they die because um, they're just the biggest point block we have. I think they're roughly maybe five or 600 points out of our 2,000-point uh, team here. So um, for some reason, I didn't put any of the goblins with them, though. I should have, um, but I wasn't really... I, I should have put one of the Goblin Shamans. I should have put Goblin Joe in that unit, to be honest. I should have put Goblin Joe with that unit, but I didn't. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't really know what I was thinking. Um, but uh, right now you can see how we just kind of lined up. Now, I am giving the task of my um, 
archers, or I'm sorry, my cross borks to take out uh, one of the chariots or the razor tusk. I mean, all this shit coming straight up in front like that right in the beginning is very intimidating. I wanted to move the forest goblins to the left side to take out the giant and hopefully start picking at the rock horn. And um, we're just going to have to take everything in the middle, like, head on. Magic phase got seven power dice. I go ahead and I throw up an evil eye. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw it at 3d6 evil eye into that giant, all right? And hopefully just get, like, two or three sixes and then pick them off with the, the shooting. And he's like, go ahead, do it. So I roll the dice, and I only get, like, seven dice. Out of 3d6, I only get seven dice. And he's, like, laughing. And he goes, fucking Silva, though. Fucking Silva's going to go ahead and roll, like, a shit ton of sixes. Watch. BAM! Four sixes! <laughs> Out of seven dice! <laughs> he was like, fucking bullshit, this is already happening! <laughs> and there you go, the giant got four wounds! I go in and I throw up another evil eye, he stops it, I throw up a fireball, he stops it. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and shoot the web launcher, start off the shooting phase, shooting phase, I go ahead and I throw it at the wild, ho ho wild horn herd. It drifts just a little bit, ever so slightly, hits them, clips them, kills off two guys, slows their initiative and movement. Um, over here, I'm going to start shooting these guys with the with their short bows at the giant, and I get off the last two sixes. Kills him. Nobody panics. Nobody cares. Um, so I decide, you know what? Let's keep going left to right. Let's use the cross borks. Let's shoot at that damn pig. Bam! Kill off that razor tusk. Doesn't cause a panic, and that is it. Got chariots left. Now, that field is dangerous terrain for that, that, that chariot, but whatever. Um, it's going to go ahead and start off his turn. Uh... Friday Night Dice, turn one. Now, he charges here into my goblins. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I can stand and shoot, of course, but then they're going to fucking get chumped. It's a Razor Tusk Chariot. It has like five wounds or some shit crazy. So I'm like, dude, I'm not I'm not going to be able to survive this. And he, if he hits them, he's, they're going to die. So I'm going to flee. So I flee, and he redirects into the crossbow orcs. And I'm like, go ahead, man. It's like, he needs a 12. I don't know how many times this happens to me. I'm like, he needs a 12. He won't get a 12. He decides to charge his raiding chariots into the ogres there. And they're both like, yeah, whatever. They, again, he needs 12s. All right. And then he decides to charge the other chariot in. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'm, he still needs a 12. I don't care. He's cool. I don't need. I'm not worried. He's not going to get in. And bam, he gets in. God damn it. What is that shit? And he puts himself over here so he can kill my fucking Baxter. And that sucks. And that's how the table looks. Everybody else failed charging. He's going to just move up with everybody else a little bit. As so, like so. Magic face, he got eight power dice. He goes in and throws up Smoldering Ember. He does have a, a uh, fire blessing uh, ogre shaman in one of those units of uh, tribesmen. So he goes in and throws up Smoldering Ember onto this thing. Gives it plus one toughness and a ward save. That sucks. He goes goes go straight into close combat. Close combat. He starts attacking. I think he kills maybe like one or two of my guys. Plus some impact hits. I go ahead and attack back. I am steadfast and I fail the steadfast roll. And for the record, I'm just going to point this out right now. Check out Ruglud. He's the fourth orc over. His arm looks jacked in this picture. I mean, he looks... He has like striations on striations. And I painted that shit and I didn't even realize how good it is until I saw this picture. Holy shit. I'm sorry, I got sidetracked there. I just saw striations, and I was like, God damn. Anyways, <laughs> he, get, he did impact it. He kicks my ass. I'm, I'm steadfast. I roll the dice, and I fail the fucking steadfast roll. They run off the table. He chases. When he chases, he clips into the goblins who are already fleeing, and he just took out both my goblin shamans on turn one. Are you fucking kidding me? That fucking chariot wiped out my left side. Oh my god, that really hurts. And that was both our shamans. That was both our evil eyes. That that was just that neutered us on turn one. That fucking razor tusk. It's gonna go ahead and start off our turn. Shyhammer turn two. Shyhammer turn two. Decide to charge the squigs into the raiding chariot. We decide to charge the the bulls. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think we yeah we went we decided to charge the ogres. Uh, tribesmen into the other chariot and they both get in um, chicken head fails to rally continues to flee and flees off the table uh, and I decide we decided to just start moving up the rest of the characters as so or the monsters like so I'm um, trying to get frosty close enough to um, give an aura but at the same time we don't want to get 
flanked or charged by those freaking yetis or the tribesmen on the right side. Um, the mercenaries are moving up a little bit just to shoot, and long shots just going to start off our shooting phase. I have no magic. Shooting phase! Long shot shoots at some skirmishing uh, yetis. I think he did one wound. He did do one wound. Huh, interesting. Um, going to go ahead and do... Um, the mercenary is shooting double tapping shots into the guys in the in the field. Does one wound to them. Um, the A Rock shoots the web launcher, fails and misfires, and uh, takes a wound. Can shoot like normal on nor uh, the next turn. Um, and then close combat over here. Close combat impact hits alone. That's funny. You can see like the chips are like bouncing on the table right when that happened. Impact hits alone just devastate this thing fuck it up hit him uh like three wounds he goes in and attacks i don't think he really did much on damage so we go ahead and attack and we just destroy it he had one guy with a great weapon on there but it didn't matter because we killed it before it got a chance to we reformed the ogres to face this way so it's all front flanks um and uh the squigs ate their chariot and we're all good to go we're just facing off that way it's going to start off his turn friday night dice turn two friday night dice turn two he's charging his wild horns into the ogres now in all fairness we're going to lose that fight we know we're going to lose that fight so you know what we're like and uh it's it's a decent charge um so um and you can see also there's a raiding chariot that panic and fleed and he fled and he's fled through that unit there so he's back there but anyways so we're like you know what I was like, we could take the charge, and you know what's gonna happen? We might lose the unit anyways, but then it's gonna give him better positioning and all that. I was like, you know what, Chewie, just just flee, just flee. So we go ahead and we flee that unit. Um, this guy right here is getting chaffed by Ham, so he charges Ham, and Ham flees, goes this way. He's gonna charge with his ogres up there, and Ham flees further, and everybody kind of gets away. And he's just like, what the hell? And you can see everybody just like has to fail charge, and it's just it's pretty nasty for him right now. And uh, that's about it. We're going to go into... Uh, oh, he tries to redirect into the squigs. And I think he does get into that one. Um, he does. Like so. And everybody else did fail. Magic phase got four power dice. He starts throwing up some totems. Again, I don't know what the totems are. It's just, I'm just throwing out coins that I found. Um, so he got the totem here. Um, and then we're going to go to close combat. Close combat. The squigs. Squigs are hungry. Squigs ate four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight wild horns. He goes ahead and he killed off at least... Let's see, that would be six, seven, eight. He killed eight squigs. Now, I did fail uh, because he charged. He has a rank. He has a banner. And uh, that's three um, over our eight to eight kills. And I don't have a rank. And I don't have a banner. And I am not steadfast. Now, my general's far the back over there by the, the veterans. So that means I need, like, snake eyes to stand there. And I don't have snake eyes. So my fucking squigs blow up. Boom! Over here. All right. Now, <laughs> when they blow up, they, you can see they're going to eat some more wild horns. They're going to eat the fucking rock horn. And they're going to eat the A rock. God damn it. So the, they only kill off two wild horns. They do three fucking wounds to the A rock. Three! Are you fucking kidding me? Why do you have to hurt the A rock so bad? <laughs> rock horn? Nothing! Not a goddamn wound went through. God damn. Damn it! I knew it. As soon as I rolled the dice, I saw it, and it was like five, five, six, six on the A rock, and I was like, "Those dice are not gonna do that again against his rock horn." And when I rolled him for the rock horn, I was like, "One, one, two, two. I was like, "God, damn it!" Uh, it's gonna start off shy hammer. I think this was turn three. Turn three, shy hammer. The A rock and Frosty are both looking at that wild horn unit, and I decide I'm gonna charge the A rock first because the A rock is closer. I decided I, this is I, I thought about this long and hard. If, if he panics on a terror test or something like that, um, I would like to, him to fail it with the closer monster. Also, uh, Frosty has better uses if he doesn't charge because he can lower initiative, right? So I decided to charge A rock first, and Rick was really slick. He's like, I'm gonna flee. So he flees all the way over there. Now. My brother's original intention was just to charge again with the, the, the frost horn and push him even further. But I was like, you know what? Don't do that. Let's see if the A Rock could just make it in. So I go ahead and I roll the dice for the A Rock. It needed like a 16 because that's as far as he roll, uh, ran. So 16 minus 7, I need a 9. I think I needed a 10. I roll the dice, swift stride. Bam! A Rock ate the whole fucking unit, including that general that was in there. Way to go, fucking A Rock. Rick shook my hand like, you son of a bitch, you got him. And um, the A Rock just ate that unit. Nobody uh, panics, though. Um, 
these guys continue to flee, unfortunately. They didn't, never rallied over here. Um, and they run off the fucking table. And then uh, we move... Um, we move the frost horn. Now this is the fucked up part. We're trying to we're trying to pick at his rock horn. His rock horn, his rock mammoth or whatever it's called, rock or rock, is going to charge something and he's gonna do a shit ton of impact hits. I think it's like three D three strength seven impact hits. So whatever it hits, it's gonna fuck up, right? So we're just trying to shoot the crap out of this guy, right? So um we're we face off Frosty to face this way to hopefully get a bolt thrower shot in. We're shooting the freaking uh, veterans at him. We're shooting long shot at him. We're just we're just trying to pick at him right now because he's a big threat on our side. We should have honestly moved, even if we move Frosty a little closer to the A Rock, um, to give him a a, a cold bubble. What's going to happen is the Frosty's in a bad spot. Could get charged by the freaking uh, Yetis in the background. Could get charged by the Chariot. Could get charged by the Rockhorn. So either way, the Frosty's moving. The Frosty's in trouble. All right, so. We're going to start off shooting phase. Shooting phase, the veterans start shooting at this guy. Only get one fucking wound through. And that's it. Long shot missed. Uh, our frosty missed. And that's going to suck. It's going to start off his turn. Friday night dice, turn three. Here it goes. He's charging into uh, frosty here. We stand and shoot. And I believe he actually fails this one at this moment. He charges the radi ch rating chariot in here. I don't care. Uh, a rock could usually take shit like this. No problem. He charges the yetis in. And they both get in. And like I said, this guy failed. He barely failed by like one inch. I think he needed more. Um, so he goes ahead and he moves up his uh, his tribesmen on the left. He's moving up his raiding chariot back over this way. He's moving his other tribesmen rallied over there on that side. Um, and that's kind of how the table looks right now. Magic phase, he got 12 power dice. He's going to go ahead and throw a fireball onto long shot. Long shot takes it like a champ. Long shot. He lives, doesn't do a goddamn wound to long shot. He goes ahead and he throws up... Um, uh, the, I don't remember what he threw up on. He did something. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyways, uh, close combat, close combat, impact hits. Does two more wounds onto the A-Rock. These fuckers over here do, like, another wound onto the A-Rock. A-Rock goes. A-Rock kills the chariot, starts attacking the fucking yetis, kills off, I think, a, like, one wound on a yeti or something like that, and the A-Rock sticks there because of stubborn. We're going to go into... Shy Hammer turn four. Shy Hammer turn four. Frosty moves closer to the A Rock because now now this really matters because if Frosty moves closer to the A Rock, um, he's gonna lower the Yetis low enough where the A Rock's gonna go first and hopefully just kill off the Yetis, right? Um, so we move them like this. Now we still kind of keep the, the the mercenaries back enough so we can just shoot the crap out of the freaking uh, Rockhorn. Magic phase uh, got nine power dice. I don't know why I got magic. I don't. I don't know why. Anyways, shooting phase. <laughs> <laughs> shooting phase um long shot shoots uh does two more wounds out of the rock horn um and then over here close combat a rock bam killed off two of those fuckers two of them and uh, the one attacks back cannot wound a rock a rock scares it away boogity boogity boo it runs away it runs through uh frosty a rock chases but misses it i didn't care if i chased and he gets a rear charge on me because the a rock really is uh doesn't does it's stubborn. Even if he loses, she loses combat. It's gonna be stubborn. So, um, so I go ahead and I chase, and it gets a fucking way, and it's gonna start off his turn. Team Friday Night Dice turn four. Friday Night Dice turn four. Here it goes. He's charging the ogres into A Rock. A Rock only has like one or two wounds left. That's it. He's charging the Rockhorn into our Frosty. We contemplated fleeing, but if we flee, we're gonna flee into the line of sight of his. Um, his other guys who could just pick him off. So it's not worth fleeing. We're going to stand and shoot. Does another wound onto Rockhorn. Rockhorn only has two wounds left. Um, yeah, see, if we would have fleed, he would have just got us with the freaking ogres that were back there. Um, he did rally his freaking Yeti. He's, these guys are just chilling on the terrain because they're collecting points at the moment. Magic Face, he got eight power dice. He goes ahead and throws up, I don't remember, ward saves or something like that. Whatever. Uh, close combat. Impact hits. Kills the A-Rock overruns and hits the frosty that fucking blows he's gonna start off attacking the frosty impact hits does four wounds onto frosty frosty attacks back does one wound onto the rock horn rock horn attacks back and i believe just annihilates frosty he just took both our monsters that sucks it's gonna start off shy hammer turn five shy hammer turn five fucking long shots pissed 
BAM! Shot the fuck out of Frosty. Fuck that big mother... Or Frosty. Rocky. Fuck Rocky. God damn that big motherfucker. Causes a panic check on the ogres. Causes them to run. But that's about it. Uh, our, our mercenaries here start shooting at his yeti. It only does about one wound onto the yeti. And that's it. It's going to start off his turn five. His turn five, these guys rally. The yeti runs off the table, I believe. Um... And uh, Magic Face, he got five power dice. He goes in and throws up the freaking Smoldering Ember. Gives these guys a ward save. And now we're kind of SOL. Turn six, Shy Hammer. This is like basically the last turn of the game. I think he gets his turn in. Um, we just move up to, close enough to shoot at him. Um, and uh, that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to force a panic check. Hopefully they run off the table, but it really doesn't do much. Um, he got ward saves. It really didn't do much. Um, Longshot joined the unit up there, and uh, it's going to start off his turn six. He moves up closer, so that way he doesn't get shot off like we, we thought he would. Uh, Magic Face, he got nine power dice. He goes in and throws a big fireball onto our mercenaries. Kills off three mercenaries. Oh, shit. Three mercenaries with that fireball. And uh, that was basically the end of the game. That was it. Uh, he didn't really have any other shooting. I think he tries to do his uh, some other spells, and it doesn't really matter. Guys, oh, my God. That was an ugly game. And we still had a really close game. It was almost a tie. Almost a tie. But it was like an 11-9 loss. We lost by, like, one point. Or like, well, not one point. We lost by, like, a couple hundred, and then it made us lose a, a point. If it wasn't 11 9, it was a 12 8. But either way, it was a really close game. We we didn't get the objectives because there was, like, co collecting terrain, and we only had that one unit left. Um, and if the game would have continued on past turn six, we would have probably lost eventually. I mean, the mercenaries are very tough, and we do have two characters in that unit, but uh, we're just outnumbered right now. We have, He has tribesmen he has uh those those he has tribesmen and tribesmen and he has some razor tusk chariot that's on the left corner and then some razor tusk that's running around we would have just got eventually out grinded um losing the double wizards shamans in the beginning was horrible that that just that that butchered us so badly it was just nasty um besides that uh the a rock or taking a hit from the squigs was pretty nasty that really hurt the a rock the a rock might have been able to live um if um if that didn't happen but the squigs really just kind of hurt us um so we did lose we're not on the top table we're not getting any fucking trophy for best general or best overall and uh the guys that we just beat uh, uh, Guild of Calamitous Intent their opponents, which I think were like the 10 year old kids, no it wasn't the 10 year old kids I remember who it was, they just conceded, they were like we're done you, you beat us, so whenever somebody quits they get the full allotment of points so they got a 25 and 0 and the 25 and 0 pushes them way higher than us, and I was like god damn it man, we were really really pushing, like fighting our asses off to get this far and then some kids in the ne table next to us just quit Oh, that's brutal, man. That hurts. Um, so that means that even even though Rick won here on Friday Night Dice, he's not going to get best general because the table behind us, the guy just got 25 points, and we barely gave Rick, like, 12. <laughs> oh, man, that's brutal. So um, after all said and done, uh, it was a tough game. Rick, if you're listening to this, it was a tough, tough game. Um you know, uh, Rick's actually a really fun guy to play against. He's a, uh, you know, he's very tactical, um, and I like to say he's very old school. A lot of his methods are old school. Um, he puts people in positions to, to catch um, fleeing units. Uh, he puts people in position to like cause an ambush. Like he had, you can't even see it in this picture here. He has a freaking razor tusk on the other side of that building, just in case anybody went on the other side of the building, and he'll hit you with the razor tusk. That's just like ingenious. That's just like holy shit. Uh, Rick, on the next day, there was another Adepticon tournament that I didn't go to. It was Warbands. It was only a thousand point games. He actually took first place overall. Um, so that was pretty in, uh, interesting. Um, again, in the beginning, if I didn't lose both Shamans so early on, it would have been a different game. It would have been a hugely different game. I would have been able to pick apart uh, low armored units, and um, that it, the game would have just, yeah. It would have been entirely different. But, um, you know, I really did like Frosty and A-Rock teaming up together. They didn't really ever get the, the combat together, which really hurts. Because that's the one thing I was hoping for them to do. But um, 
they uh they they were, they were a good tag team to be honest. Um the veteran mercenaries are just insane. Poison shooting, poison attacks, bodyguard, um you know, nice armor saves. They're just you know, Jesus Christ, they're insane to deal with. Um one of the things that I told my brother we got to do is make sure that they're the last ones in combat because if they go first and we lose that unit first, we lost the game. Now, every single game we played, we got a tie, we got a win, and we got a small loss. Um, we never lost them. We never lost that unit. That unit stuck around till the end. Um, for MVPs in this game specifically, I'm giving it to the A-Rock. Um, <clears throat> the A-Rock, I was honestly, before, before I was doing this video, I started going over how many points each unit took so I could accurately put it at the bottom at the end of the, the video and I didn't think the AROC should have took uh, MVP on this one because she died and it was just kind of ugly and whatever but then I started looking at it when I was doing the points she ate a whole fucking unit of wild horns ate the general then put herself in a position to get attacked in like triple charge got charged by yetis got charged by a chariot got sandwiched in Killed the chariot, killed the yetis, <laughs> and then got hit again by a freaking unit of of uh, tribesmen, and she still was fighting. <laughs> she is such a bitch. I love her. I love her. She's awesome. So she's taking the MVP award. Now let's go over uh, the units on what they did. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this through the lowest unit, the lowest points. To the highest points and then I'm also going to give you the MVP uh, and it's not really based on points if um, actually if it won't you'll see what happens so over here I'm going to combine this this is actually Baxter Baxter's a level one goblin shaman with the evil eye and then the unit of uh, forest goblins now the forest goblins and Baxter Baxter only got only got 15 points in all three games that's it Wow, I think he killed one rioter in the in this game in the picture that's taken. Uh, the Bushwhackers got a total of 124 points. They only got 49 points in this round, which they killed off that giant, um, which with like two wounds left. So two wounds were like 20 something points and a half each. But um, the the Bushwhackers and Baxter only got a total of 139 points from three games. Uh, the Bushwhackers died in two games, um, and Baxter died in those same two games. So, yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, over here, we have Chickenhead. Chickenhead got the second lowest point score. He actually got 140 points total, and that was in the one game, and that's at this one charge right here where he took out a whole unit of crossbow, the Dread Elves, and uh, he died in all three games. Now, in all fairness, Chickenhead, I bought him for 70 points as a two-up armor chaff, and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. In all fairness, he, does, he did better as a two-up chaff than I do with... Uh, five wolf riders for 60 points <laughs> so way to go chicken Eddie you, you made up more points than those son of a bitches ever do um, all right let's see who's next up on here next up is frosty now frosty did cause a massive panic check and frosty did bring a lot of support a lot of support by giving negative initiative uh, bonuses all around Frosty got a total of 186 points overall. Uh, only 84 points in this game right here. Frosty died every single game. <laughs> that sucks. Um, got the most points in that first game, which was pretty apparent when you see the first game. Um, next up is the Squigs. Now, the Squigs actually did zero points round one, negative 200 points round two. Actually, I think it was negative points in round one, too. And then in this game here, got 189 points. And that's exactly how much they're getting for the total amount is 189 points. But top it off, they took 113 points off my A-Rock. They bit my A-Rock for freaking three or four wounds, and it hurt my damn A-Rock. God damn you, son of a bitches. Uh, so they're getting pretty low on the bottom there. I'm actually, I'm, I, I love the squigs. I love the initiative. I love the threat. I love having an extra horde on the table. But I'm giving the Squigs a boot for a couple games, probably the next two tournaments I go to, until I feel like I need them back. But they, they've just been underperforming for me. Um, and I'm not saying they're a bad unit. I think they're a great unit. I just don't think I'm using them right. Um, <clears throat> Longshot, Longshot, my general, 
Uh, he actually got, let's see, where did I put it? 349 points. He got almost double the amount that the Squigs got by himself. And all he has is a skull splitter shotgun and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, poison. That's insane. He got a total of 229 points in the first round, 36 in the second round, 84 in the third round for a total of 349. He did not die at all. Holy shit, long shot. That's a beast right there. That is a fucking general that's deserving of being a general. Wow. Um, Alright, let's see who's next. Next up is the Crossborks. The Crossborks, uh, they got 50 points in this last game. They got a total of 430 points. They didn't die in the first game. They didn't die in the second game. The third game, they did die. If they didn't die in that third game, I think they would have put up a bigger threat, too. So they got uh, whatever place that is. I don't even know. All right, let's see who's next up. Next up is the Tribesmen. Now, the Tribesmen actually surprisingly did really well. Um, they did um, 476 points total. They got 110 points in this last game, um, and they were pretty consistent every game. 220 points, 140 points, 110 points. Um, they did die in every game, though, which sucks. But at the same time, it's it's just circumstances, you know? It's just the way the cookie crumbles. So 476 points, I think they did very well. Now we're down to the top three, guys. Top three. Number three goes to the uh, Goblin Joe. I was going to say the Veteran Mercenaries, but I couldn't find a picture of the Veteran Mercenaries. It was actually Goblin Joe. Goblin Joe, holy shit, did 620 points of damage from Evil Eyes and Fireballs. And just, that's crazy. And I did not give Joe any points for when the Mercenaries killed somebody and overran and took them. I usually give it to the characters inside because I can't tell if they fought or not or what they did for the fight. But Joe didn't do shit. Joe was just in the corners casting spells. So Joe got 620 points. Holy shit. That's insane. I am actually, because of Goblin Joe, I am actually going to probably switch out of Shadow and go into the Little Gods for a little while because um, I, I just think it's insane that he had that much impact on the games that he just took that many points that's insane 620 points that's insane now number two goes actually to the veteran mercenaries themselves they got into a lot of brawls they got into a brawl here with the knights they got into a brawl with the freaking dread elves so the with the freaking the general the the altar whatever it is the the cauldron of blood and then in the, the last game they didn't get into any brawls they were just shooting 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 and if they would have got into a brawl at the last game they probably would have took the most points overall but they ended up with a total of 65 points on round three but a total of 1036 points out of all three games and they did not die a single game all three games they were alive this right here, they're taking second place in points, but I'm giving them the tournament MVP award because they didn't die a goddamn time and they just took chunks of points and they were a point denial unit. They were the reason why we got big wins or no, like very small losses. They were insanely powerful, this unit. And then that leaves the final first place in points. First place in points, the A Rock. <laughs> the mother of dragons. The A Rock took. Uh oh. Okay. The A Rock took 1,106 points total. Every game she took a consistent amount. She died every game, though. And that's because people know she's a threat. So, uh, the second game she didn't do so hot, and that was against the Dread Elves. But um, besides that game alone, um, she did great. 1106 points that's just pretty pretty good um she did fuck up my uh, squigs too <laughs> i think that's what it was in round two she fucking hit the squigs with the web launcher so in round three the squigs got back at her and bit her ass that's fucked up i just noticed that right now <laughs> oh man anyways guys so that's how the points crumble we're going into the award ceremony the award ceremony um Justin Berge and Jeremy, I am not going to pronounce your last name right, won best overall. They got the gold Adepticon chokers or whatever they are, pendants, medals, medals. <laughs> um, in the background, you can kind of make out Rick Fisher in the middle there, and then in the back right, you can see uh, Dennis Gunya. Um, 
but yeah, Justin and uh, Jeremy, they kind of swept the Adepticon, I believe. Um, they just took a bunch of gold gold uh, medals home. Um, as for second place, actually was against our first opponent, which was Mike Hernandez and Rodrigo. They ended up taking best generals. And um, that's that's actually pretty impressive. They were on the table ahead of us. They were on table two. So um, table one was actually Bergie and Jeremy against Fergus and Jeremy. And uh, table two was Mike against, I think, Max Lapora. I want to say it was against Max. So they must have beat Max uh, with Pew Pew Die or Pew Pew Pew, whatever it was. And uh, Max actually took best sportsman. <laughs> So Max and uh, his buddy here. I don't have his buddy's name. I just see pew pew pew. Um, I just know Max from uh, Ocon though. Um, so they they took best sportsman, and then that left best paint paint. Well, best paint went to Shy Hammer. Holy shit! I came home with something something <laughs> from Adepticon. All right, <laughs> that was my goal, guys, just to come home with something. And uh, sure enough, not only did they give us these these. Uh, these medals for best paint we also got an age of sigmar freaking dude with a bow and i'm like what, what the fuck is this <laughs> what am i gonna do with this i don't know <laughs> oh man i'm actually might just sell it if anybody wants an age of sigmar dude with a bow and the wings it's like a 40 dollar miniature um send me a message <laughs> i'll sell it to you <laughs> just <laughs> pick up something that i could use instead <laughs> i don't know what the hell the guy does I don't know what, I mean, like, I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, I could probably use bits, and then I was like, do I really want $40 of bits of this guy? I don't, I don't think so. I'm never going to touch, uh, the Empire, or Empire, the Sigmar guys, the Sigmarines, any day. <laughs> but I really do appreciate the prize support from, uh, Adepticon, at least, at least they, um, stepped up and gave out some prizes. Um, and I'm really happy that, uh, that we walked away with, the, uh, Best Paint. Um, it was actually between us and I think Justin and Jeremy, um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was about it. It was just us in between Justin and Jeremy, and we won. Um, but my brother was like, right after this game, was like, you know, if we're uh, we're doing more team tournaments, we gotta we gotta fix the paint on, on my side because he's like, I'm afraid that I'll bring your paint down, James. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So you'll see some uh, next time you see uh, my brother and I come to the table together. You'll see his army with a little bit of boosted in paint, nicer banners and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we had a blast. It was it was a fun time at Adepticon. Uh, unfortunately, once Bitten had to leave right before this, uh, so he didn't get to see the team tournament uh, finish. But he will see it now, actually, uh, if he watches my videos still. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, besides that, guys, like I said, I have like so many videos in the bank right now that I got to get out, get out to you guys. I'm gonna try to get them out. In the meantime, my fucking phone just died. I mean, like, just blew up. My computer at home just died. I'm like, holy shit, did somebody hit me with an EMP grenade or something like that? I don't know. Just everything's dead. I'm surprised that this video hasn't shut off yet. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm i having a great time. I, Adepticon was a blast. Um, it was the same room as last year, um, which was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to see everybody uh, just show up again. And you see faces that are very familiar um and uh we had a, i mean we had a blast i, I think we, we you know overall we just uh, enjoyed ourselves um we are uh we we went to dinner i think this night i think it was this night yes um with uh jeff parkhurst and um fergus and max and there's a couple other guys there um we went to dinner and we were talking about uh buckeye battles um we're go we're definitely going to buckeye battles um uh, we're gonna make the road trip out there. Uh, we are going to uh, Blood in the Sun, and uh, actually we're throwing a Blood in the Sun Primer tournament at the Dice Dojo. Uh, Fergus and I have been talking about it. We're gonna go ahead and do that um, May seventh, the Saturday, and uh, we're just gonna have pizza and just you know do some uh, do a mini tournament. Then there's gonna be actually just straight up cash prize. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, you can always message me and. Uh, uh, I'll give you more information if you're in the Chicagoland area. Uh, you can always just uh, uh, send me a message and I'll, I'll give you guys more info. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do the Blood in the Sun Primer in May. We're going to do Blood in the Sun in June. And then we're going to do Buckeye Battles in July. So that's what I'm going to have to be um, getting myself prepared for. Um, I'm going to make a couple switches to my list. I'm, ma I'm making that switch from the Squigs to the Trolls. Um, just honestly, I think uh, the Squigs die too easy. 
and it, it's been hurting me. I think a lot of people know that about squigs, and they just just destroy the squigs. Um, and uh, so I'm I'm gonna make that uh, switch over. Uh, I uh, talking to Joe, and Joe is uh, the inspiration for Goblin Joe. Uh, Joe Getze is uh, from Ohio. Talking to him, uh, we were talking about um, scoring units and you know and whatnot. And he, because we were talking about scoring units and a lot of these objectives, because a lot of the objective points is like get a flag on this side or get a terrain on this side or a scoring unit needs to be here. Scoring, need, and I'm losing those points. I'm losing a point here, a point there, a point there, and those add up. And that's uh, you know not helping me out. So we were talking about it, and I was like, ha ha, bore boys, blah blah blah. And he's like, well, that's actually a decent scoring unit. So just because of that, I am going to start bringing a unit of Bore Boys, or at least I'm going to test out a unit of Bore Boys for a little while to see how I like it. Um, they are taking the place of the goblin, um, the, the forest goblins, because even though I really like the forest goblins, I like having a little small unit to deal with chaff. I like having a small unit that, that is chaff, and I like having that unit that could just pick apart something small. Or, or be stubborn in the, the forest. They, I mean, I think they're really a good utility unit, and then they can also offer bodies for um, for a bunker. Um, I do feel like um, losing that poison was a big blow, and I was like, well, you know, I could just give them a goblin shaman, and the goblin shaman will give them poison attacks and, and armor piercing and all that shit. And then I was like, dude, I could just do that with the freaking crossbows. <laughs> so my goblin shaman is probably going to be sitting with the crossborks, um, and the forest goblins are. Again, getting the axe temporarily. We'll figure out when I put them back in and see what I what I should change around. I'm gonna, I, you know me, I always play with lists. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them, um, the crossborks in or the boar boys in, and uh, put in some trolls and see how the points look from there. Uh, in the meantime, guys, I hope you've been enjoying these videos. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, I've been sorry I'm rambling, but if you haven't hit like and subscribe, hit it. Um, and I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers, guys. If you guys can help push my push my videos out there and get me another 120 subscribers or 112 subscribers however many more I need at the moment that would be awesome I'm almost at a thousand that's actually a pretty uh that's my milestone there you know um and um I am going to be making more content as soon as I can if you guys would like to help out with some money for batteries or these tournaments you guys could always go to my youtube channel and there's a support button on the right side hit it and anything is much appreciated um and uh besides that I'm going to go ahead and deal with my fucked up phone and my fucked up computer. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace. Any comments and feedback will be hugely appreciated and probably potentially trolled as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.